you're in New Hampshire. That's where you're located. You're working on the Free State Project. Um, so that's a really interesting thing. Um, and I want to know a little bit more about that and kind of what the uh, what the roots of the Free State Project are. The basic idea was, and I, I wrote an essay 22 years ago proposing this. I was a graduate student. And the basic idea was that um, classical liberals, libertarians, people who support strictly limited government, uh, we can't make a big impact at the national level. It's just too big, too far away, too dominated by interest groups, billions and billions of dollars at stake in making sure that the status quo doesn't change. Um, so as, as disappointing as it may be and as hard to accept as it may be, we're not going to have a big impact on Washington, D.C., but we could have a big impact in a single state, especially one that's small, has an open political process, and most importantly is already sympathetic to a lot of these I ideals of individual freedom. And so I proposed this general idea. A lot of people signed up, and the first 5,000 people who signed up um, had the right to vote on which state we chose <laughs> to be our new home. And the state that won that vote was New Hampshire, in part because the governor at the time, a guy named Craig Benson, uh, supported the Free State Project and actually kind of lobbied us to choose New Hampshire. So of all the states we were considering, um, it was the only state where the, the governor really wanted us. Plus, it has the, the motto, live free or die. It has no general state sales tax, no general state income tax, no seatbelt law for adults, right? So it has this sort of uh, <laughs> more respect for, for private property, for individual freedom, individual choice. And, uh, and that made it a great home for us. In addition, it turns out, it's, it has a really accessible political system. So it's the most decentralized state in America. That means that about two-thirds of our tax burden is decided at the local level, not the state level. Uh, since there's no state sales tax or income tax, most of the revenue comes from local property taxes, actually. That goes to support schools and roads and police and fire. Um, and... And the state only gives a little bit to, to local governments. So local governments are, have, a lot of, have a lot of room to decide uh, what they are going to budget and how much they're going to raise in taxes. So that makes it very accessible for the average citizen to really affect their tax burden. What makes it even more accessible is the fact that most of these towns still have the New England town meeting form of government. So you're directly voting on the budget. And each individual line in the budget is a, is a different vote. And so if you get a town of people who want lower taxes, who uh, want to be fiscally responsible, they can do that. They can have very low taxes um, and provide that kind of favorable environment for, for property owners. Um, they can decide on, on local zoning, right? That's a, another local issue. And many... Uh, towns in New Hampshire don't have zoning at all, um, so they allow property owners to do what they like with their property. So for those reasons, uh, New Hampshire is really a kind of perfect place for people who favor limited government, individual freedom uh, to get involved. And thousands of people have moved, and including myself, and uh, have gotten elected, have changed legislation, and it's, uh, and it's really made an impact in an area of the country that people perceive as being rather statist and, and left-wing. Uh, New Hampshire actually really stands out, and that's uh, been a, a good model, actually. It's been a, a very clear contrast between, say, Vermont, Maine, and, and New Hampshire, all northern New England states. Mm -hmm. New Hampshire, by far, the most successful in terms of its economy, in terms of attracting people and, and investment because of its free market policies. Uh.